munchies, welcome to the channel if you're new or if you're not, I'm Alicia and either way, I am so happy you're here. Today I am making one of my favorite party foods of all time, charcuterie boards. I absolutely love to make charcuterie boards anytime I host people. I think they are perfect for any party or event. Sometimes I'll even make them for a nice twist on a fancy at home dinner. They always look impressive but are actually really easy to make. Today I'll share a full charcuterie board as well as a vegetarian cheese board for those of you who want to go meat free. First, I want to talk a little bit about assembling a board like this because there's really no right way to do it and there are no hard and fast recipes or rules. You do not need to be super specific about ingredient amounts and there isn't anything that you absolutely have to include. I am just going to show you the way that I choose to assemble a board in hopes that I can inspire you and talk a little bit about what sort of components I use and my approach so that you can very easily make your own board that looks super impressive using only the ingredients that you you want to use. So the components I typically stick to are meats, cheeses, crackers, spreads, fruits and veggies, and additional accents like nuts, olives, dried fruits, and even edible flowers. For meats, I typically choose two to four different kinds per board, and I'll change my selection based on what I feel like eating or what I know my guests like, or even what's on sale sometimes, since these ingredients can be expensive. A little goes a long way with these boards, so I can typically end up making three to five boards with the amount of ingredients I get to have the variety that I like. I like to use a variety of antipasto meats like salami and prosciutto and even summer sausage. And then I also like deli ham and turkey. As you'll see throughout this video, the possibilities are really endless. One way that I love to use meats on a board is by making these beautiful meat roses. They are impressive looking, but easier than you might think to make. Grab a glass and fold your meat circle in half around the edge. These are big pepperonis. I've also done this with salami and have them overlapping slightly. Keep going around the glass overlapping until the hole in the middle closes for the most part. And once there are enough layers, flip the glass over and remove it to reveal a meat rose. Fancy. Okay, but we need more than just meat for this board. So for cheeses, one hack, I guess, is that I actually buy packs of cracker cuts that are pre-cut. This really cuts down on prep time so I can focus on assembly. I like to choose packs that have a variety in color and flavor, and I like to choose other cheeses that add variety and texture too. Items like cheese cubes, a goat cheese log, a blue cheese wedge, etc. they give the board nice visual variety, and having a mix of soft and hard cheeses also adds textural variety. Speaking of visual variety, you'll also want some cracker Crackers. Uh, my go-to is a box of mixed entertainment crackers because it comes with a nice selection of different flavors and shapes and crackers. Sometimes I'll also use pretzels or pretzel chips, sliced pita bread. I really love Raincoast crisp crackers as well. They look completely different than any other cracker and have a great, unique, sweet flavor. And not sponsored, actually I once did my own homemade version of these crackers, which were delicious. I will link them below, but to be honest, when I make a charcuterie board, I am not gonna be making any homemade crackers. Okay, so it's also important to include some dips and spreads, like grainy mustards, jams, hummus, pesto, whatever you want. I am a big fan of grainy mustard on a charcuterie board, but these are just my recommendations, so you should choose whatever you like. All the meats and cheeses can start to get a little heavy, so it's important to balance things out with some fresh fruits and vegetables. I am a big fan of grapes and berries on a charcuterie board, but I also love cherry tomatoes, cucumbers, carrots. You can also use nectarine or clementine slices or any of your favorite fruits and veggies. I really love fruits and veggies to add color to the board as well. Meat is brown, cheese is white or yellow, so get some options that add brightness, like green, red, blue, purple. This is also a great way to use up any produce that you've got lying around the house. I like to crinkle cut cucumbers and carrots to add textural variety too. Plus, don't veggies actually taste better when they're crinkle cut? Lastly, I like to make sure that I've got some little additions and accents like nuts, dried fruit, maybe some chocolate or yogurt covered raisins, olives, fresh herbs, and even edible flowers if I can find them, which I can't always, but this week I did. These accents add nice bursts of salt and sweetness to the board, and they help to fill in any remaining space, which leads us 
to assembly. But first, I wanna reiterate, this is not really a recipe to be followed to a T. In fact, I rarely, I never pre-plan how I'm going to lay out my board. I just kinda go with what feels right. That said, I do follow a couple of basic guidelines that I have really just made up over the years of doing this to make sure that you know, no matter how I choose to assemble my board, I know it's gonna end up beautiful and balanced and impressive. I like to start with the larger individual elements and build around them. So today that means starting with my dip bowls and then those meat roses. Again, I don't really go with the plan. This becomes like a fun art project where I get to experiment and kind of see what happens. I'm gonna add my meats and cheeses and crackers before everything else because they are really the main components of this board. So I get on the focal elements of the dip bowls and meat roses and I like to have curved shapes and lines on the board. So I'm gonna start to fan my ingredients around the larger focal points. I overlap the cheeses with other colors for variety. I also consider texture here. So for example, I'll layer crackers of the same size, but different colors. Once the meat, cheese, and crackers are on, I move generally into fruits and veggies. I layer my crinkle cut carrots and cucumber, which adds a fresh pop of color and texture too, not just visually, but flavor-wise as well. Olives, grapes, and cherry tomatoes are smaller board items Items, but they're not just for garnish. They're still more substantial, so I'll start to add them next. I also love to leave my grapes on the stem for even more visual texture and color. This is the point when the board starts to fill up, which means it's the perfect time to start filling in space with smaller garnish or accent items like berries, nuts, yogurt, and chocolate-covered raisins, mini gherkin pickles, whatever else you like. Not everyone does this. Some people like space on their board. I like it to be completely covered. If I have edible flowers, I will add them at the very end because they are delicate and it's easy to squeeze them into any remaining little spaces. When I assembled this board, I did not pre-plan it. I just stuck to some of these basic principles and sort of went with the flow. One thing I love about charcuterie boards is that it's a creative practice and your board will likely look very different from my board because we're very different people and that is okay. I hope that you can use this as inspiration to make your perfect board and in fact, I've made dozens of boards and they turn out a bit different every single time. Some I like more than others, but at the end of the day, this art is being eaten. So no stress, it's not gonna be hung on your wall. Okay, so like I said at the beginning, we're gonna make two boards today. The second board is a fully vegetarian board and I set it up in sort of a non-traditional way. But first, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of more videos just like this. The truth is, we don't all have a huge wooden cutting board at home or a charcuterie platter. So sometimes it's okay to just split things up. I used two smaller wooden bowl plates, which I think these are technically fruit bowls, but honestly it's getting covered. So whatever big plate or flat dish you can find will work. I basically followed the same principles that I outlined above. Start with focal points and build around them, keeping in mind the broad strokes and visual shapes. Start with the main components and work your way down the hierarchy to the garnishes. So try to create as much color and textural variety as possible. Since this board didn't have any meat, I included quite a few different cheese, cracker, fruit, and vegetable options, and I used a wedge of blue cheese as one of my main focal points. And voila, it's that easy. I did not pre-plan this one either, and I really like how it turned out. I just stuck to some of these general guidelines. You can do this too, and you don't need to exactly recreate some charcuterie board that you saw on Pinterest. You can make it your own and still it will really be impressive. I hope you enjoyed this episode. On my website post for these boards, which are linked below, I have included a list that you can download with tons of ideas for each component. Types of meats and cheeses and crackers and fruits and veggies and dips, accents, all that. So I hope that that can support you in exploring. Charcuterie boards are one of my all-time favorite things to make, so I am glad that I got to share my tips with you today. If you have any of your own tips and tricks for assembling a charcuterie board, please include them in the comments below. I will be so excited to read them. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to head to mindovermunch.com for all of my recipes. I will see you next time with a brand new episode. And remember, it's all a matter of mind over munch. Mm -hmm.